In this video, I'll show you how and why you should consider using coconut coir to grow your microgreens or to start your seeds. First, what is coconut coir? It's also called coconut peat or cocoa peat or cocoa pith. Take a look at this coconut. In the middle, you can see the white flesh or meat of the coconut. That's the part we love to eat. The hollow part you see here usually has liquid in it. We call that coconut milk and we love to drink it. Then there's the inner shell and an outer shell, but in between are coconut fibers that are made into coconut coir. This coir has to be processed, which can't be done by a monkey. It's actually a very involved process. arrange for a tour next time you're in India. Coconut coir is an excellent medium because it gives a good balance between water retention and water drainage, as well as good aeration. What does this mean? Well, if the medium you use to grow in becomes waterlogged, then the roots of the plants may rot, and if they don't, they definitely won't be happy. So you want your medium to have good drainage. On the flip side, if the medium doesn't hold enough water, then the roots won't be able to find water to feed the plants, and again the plant won't be happy. So you want a medium that retains enough water, but not too much water. And coconut coir has the ability to do both. Add to that aeration. The cocoa coir has enough space between the fibers to create little air pockets so that the roots have the proper amount of air as well as water. You don't want your plants to drown, right? What else? Well, coconut coir has a neutral pH range of somewhere between 5.2 and 6.8, and this range is great for a whole host of plants, and especially microgreens. According to the True Leaf Market website, microgreens like a pH of around 6, but they can be happy with a pH of anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5, so the coconut coir has the perfect pH value for growing microgreens. What about nutrients? Well, coconut coir has pretty much no nutrients in it for the plant to use, but if we're just using it to grow microgreens or to start seeds, this can be fine. Here's what Mother Google has to say about whether your microgreens need nutrients. The general consensus is no, they don't need fertilizers, but the yield will be higher if you do fertilize them. I've grown microgreens both ways, and I can say that definitely if you water the microgreens with a hydroponic solution once the seeds have germinated, they will grow faster. But they'll also grow without any additional nutrients, just the yield will be a bit lower. What about pathogens and other pests? If you watch my other videos, you know that I like to sterilize my soil in the oven before using it indoors to kill any pests or pathogens. Some people have commented that this also destroys beneficial microbes, and yes, that's true, but the pathogens bug me more. Coconut coir is pretty sterile right out of the package, and since I grow microgreens indoors, actually in my kitchen, this is an added benefit to me. What about the environment? Is using coconut coir good for the environment? The answer is a resounding yes. First of all, coconut coir uses the parts of a coconut that would normally go to waste. And since it's organic material, you can compost it, and it will break down naturally. To top it off, coconut coir can be reused if you want by removing as much of the roots as possible and then washing the coconut coir very well. And if all else fails, you can use it for firewood. You should sterilize or pasteurize the coconut coir before using it by baking it in the oven at 180 degrees Fahrenheit for around 30 minutes to kill any pathogens that might have been introduced during the previous growing process. Can you use boiling water instead of the oven to sterilize the coconut coir? According to this comment on Reddit, yes you can. This was written for mushroom growers, but the process of sterilizing coconut coir for mushrooms or microgreens should be the same. Here the grower suggests pouring boiling water over the coconut coir and letting it sit. Other growers agree calling the process pasteurizing instead of sterilizing. 
So those are the advantages to growing microgreens on coconut coir. What about the disadvantages? A search on Reddit turns up nothing. However, it is known that coconut coir from some manufacturers may contain salt due to how the coconut husks are processed. If they're washed in water that is high in salt content, then that salt will be absorbed by the coconut coir, and that's not good. There are two solutions to this. Either buy your coconut coir from a source that says the coconut husks were washed in fresh water, as you see from this source, or wash it yourself. In my opinion, it's better to start off with high quality coconut coir than to try to amend it yourself. You can buy coconut coir in compressed bricks, as you see here, or loose, as you see here. It's easier to work with loose since you don't have to rehydrate it, but it's so much more expensive and it's really no big deal to rehydrate the coconut coir. So I say go for the compressed bricks. They store much more easily than a bag of loose coconut coir and they're much cheaper. Let's see how to rehydrate the brick. It's really easy. Here I have a compressed brick of coconut coir. Now all I do is place it in a waterproof container. An aluminum baking pan works fine and then pour warm or boiling water over the brick. Boiling water has the added benefit of pasteurizing the medium in case it needs it, but depending on how big your kettle is, you might have to go back several times for more water. Here you can see the brick expanding as it absorbs the water. It has about a 5 to 1 compression ratio, which means one cup of compressed coconut coir will give you around five cups of rehydrated coir. That's why this is such a great medium for storing. It takes up about a fifth of the space soil would. I keep adding water until I see the water isn't being absorbed anymore. You can see as I added more and more water, the brick expanded until it could no longer absorb any water. And here you have it, the rehydrated brick. This stuff is nice and fluffy and clean. I'm going to use this to plant broccoli and radish microgreens, my favorites. They grow quickly and are delicious and nutritious. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.